What is psychosis? Psychosis is a severe mental disorder in which thought and emotions are so impaired that contact is lost with external reality. It is actually a syndrome or a group of symptoms where there is a break with reality. Now, schizophrenia. Schizophrenia is a mental condition causing psychosis, but it has other symptoms as well. Schizophrenia will consist of positive symptoms, which are those symptoms also known as psychotic symptoms, which have no physiological counterpart, while the negative symptoms, which are due to a loss of normal responses. The positive or stimulatory symptoms might include delusion, which is a false belief that is so strong that the person won't change their mind even if, if they are given strong evidence against the subject. There can be hallucinations, which are sensations or auditory visual that are not real. Paranoia, in which they feel that the whole world is conspiring against them. Catatonic behavior, which is a super responsiveness in movements to stimuli. There can be disorganized speech as well as disorganized behavior. The negative symptoms or depressive symptoms will of course include depression, evolution, that is a decreased motivation to do anything, social withdrawal, and these patients spend most of their time alone. They have a flat effect, which is actually, this. these patients don't have a reaction to unusual stimuli. For example, even if, a, if they see a snake, they won't budge. There can also be allogia or poverty of speech and their speech will lack content. Now that we know about the positive and negative symptoms, we should see why they occur. There is actually a balance between dopamine and serotonin in the mesolimbic and mesocortical areas of the brain. When this balance shifts in the favor of dopamine, that is there is high dopaminergic activity in these areas, they lead to the positive symptoms of schizophrenia. And when this balance has shifted to dopamine's favor, then of course serotonin will be less and this will lead to the negative symptoms of schizophrenia. The idea that increased dopaminergic activity leads to the positive symptoms of uh, schizophrenia is supported by dopamine hypothesis and also some observations that when D2 receptor blockers are used, it causes an antipsychotic action, but when D2 agonists are used, they cause exacerbation of psychosis. While increasing serotonin in the CNS has shown improvement in the negative symptoms, just like in depression. Now that we have this background, let's see what antipsychotic or antischizophrenic or also known as neuroleptic drugs do to reduce the positive symptoms and also the negative symptoms of schizophrenia. Firstly, of course, they will act on the increased dopaminergic activity and by blocking D2 receptors will decrease this activity and show improvement in symptoms. Secondly, they can also block 5-HT2 receptors. Now remember 5-HT2 receptors are autoreceptors in serotonin neurons and uh, by inhib inhibiting the autoreceptor, there will be negative feedback and thus increased secretion of serotonin leading to increased serotonergic activity. Before going into the detail of antipsychotics, I needed to mention that apart from decreasing uh, D2 receptor activity and blocking 5H2 receptors, they also have an activity on muscarinic histamine and alpha blockade. Antipsychotic drugs are classified into the typical or older antipsychotics and the atypical or the newer ones. The typical or older antipsychotic drugs include phenothiazines, thioxanthines, and butyrophenones. The phenothiazines include chlorpromazine, thioridazine, and flufenazine. Thioxanthines is thioxanthine, and butyrophenones include haloperidol. One thing to remember about these typical or older antipsychotics is that their activity on, the, on, on blocking the dopaminergic receptors is more as compared to their activity on the autoreceptors of serotonin. And as I said, they also have their activity on alpha blockade causing side effects such as hypotension, muscarinic blockade causing salivation or sedation, and H1 blockade also causing sedation. These antipsychotics find their use in schizophrenia, the bipolar phase of mania, and also as an anti-emetic because 
uh, the chemotrigazone also has D2 receptors. Coming to the atypical or newer antipsychotics, they include clozapine as their prototype. One thing that you need to remember about clozapine is that it blocks D2C and not D2A. If you remember, D2C is present in the mesolimbic pathway, but D2, D2A is present in the nigrostriatal pathway. And a side effect that I will mention in the adverse effects of neuroleptics or antipsychotics will not be associated with clozapine because it is not going to cause Parkinsonism-like symptoms and all the other extrapyramidal symptoms because it does not block the D2A receptor associated with all of them. The other atypical antipsychotics include eripiprazole. This is not epiprazole, this is eripiprazole, olanzapine, quetiapine, risperidone, and ziprasidone. Now, in cases of the atypical or newer antipsychotics, their uh, ability to block 5-HT2 receptors is more than they, uh, their activity to block D2 receptors. Now, as I said, antipsychotics also have alpha, muscarinic, and H1 blockade. So among these drugs, those which have alpha, alpha blocking activity, I'm going to put a green star over them. Those which have an muscarinic blocking activity, I'll put a purple star and those with H1 blocking activity, I'll put a blue star. Now remember that this, uh, this differentiation on the basis of alpha, M and H1 blockade is not very specific and this can vary from book to book. They'll be used for the same purposes as the typical ones are, that is schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, manic phase, and also find, it, find the use in Huntington's chorea. Now that we are done with the drugs, let's see some side effects. Now the adverse effects of antipsychotics are due to their D2 blocking activity. They can be divided into the extrapyramidal symptoms that are chiefly due to the D2A blockade and the neuroleptic malignant syndrome. Now, coming to the extra pyramidal symptoms, we know that D2A receptors are present in the nigrostriatal pathway. And when these are blocked, they will show Parkinson -like, Parkinsonism-like symptoms. The extra pyramidal symptoms are all due to D2A blockade in the ni nigrostriatal pathway. There are mainly four types. One is drug-induced Parkinsonism. This will include all the symptoms that Parkinsonism naturally includes, that is shuffling gait, mask faces, that means expressionless face, drooling, rigidity, or tremor. This is all due to decreased dopamine uh, activity. To provide a remedy for this drug-induced Parkinsonism, we can give centrally acting anticholinergics such as benzhexone and benztropine, and also antihistamines such as promethazine, and not give a dopamine or D2 agonists because that's what we are blocking in antipsychotic therapy. Remember? The second of the extrapyramidal symptoms are acute dystonias. These are uncontrolled muscle spasms, for example, un unusual eye deviations or movements, and they can be treated with anti-muscarinic such as benztropine. The third extrapyramidal symptom is akathisia. This refers to a state of extreme restlessness where the patient cannot sit still or stand still and is continuously pacing, is just basically restless. This uh, hyperactivity is due to the hypersensitivity of the few receptors that are left from the dopamine blockade that we do with antipsychotics and they become hyper-responsive, causing too much movement. The remedy for this side effect is treating the patient with benzodiazepines. The last of the extrapyramidal symptoms are tardive dyskinesias. They are actually involuntary movements of orofacial muscles, for example, tongue protrusion or grimacing, etc. Now, there is no uh, medical uh, remedy for this uh, tardive dyskinesia, and the only option we have is switch to an atypical antipsychotic. Another side effect of antipsychotic therapy is neuroleptic malignant syndrome. Now, it has two reasons. Number one, dopamine has its action on the temperature, uh, temperature uh, regulation in hypothalamus. So when there is dopamine blockade, what happens is that the hypothalamus temperature set point is elevated and this leads to impaired heat dissipation mechanisms and thus hyperthermia. Also, central D2 receptor blockade in the hypothalamus 
and the nigrostriatal pathways and spinal cord increases muscle rigidity and tremor via extrapyramidal uh, pathways as we just saw and causes muscle stiffness and muscle contractions. That's why we have severe fever and muscle stiffness in neuroleptic malignant syndrome which is a side effect of antipsychotics. This is an emergency situation and how to deal with this is by administering dantrolene. This drug will actually uncouple muscle contraction and thus decrease uh, muscle contraction and thus decrease temperature. Antipsychotics are also known to decrease seizure threshold and thus uh, increase convulsions or seizures. This effect is very prominent with use of chlorpromazine and clozapine. Just to remind you that as I mentioned previously that clozapine blocks D2C receptors that are present in the mesolimbic and mesocortical system um, that is associated with psychosis and not the D2A which are present in the nigrostriatal pathway and thus responsible for Parkinsonism and the extrapyramidal symptoms. That's why clozapine will not cause these extrapyramidal symptoms. Now, all of that sounds very good and now you're probably thinking that next time you see a schizophrenic patient, you're going to shove clozapine into his mouth. But that's not the case. I know I'm disappointed too, but it's pharmacology. What do you expect? So to limit clozapine's use, a very important side effect is agranulocytosis, where the body cannot produce neutrophils and lead to infections. Now, I wish I could give you time to digest that one. But it also causes wet pillow syndrome and this is a cause of serotonergic activity increase. And I don't think that's very bad unless I'm not the one drooling. But I think that's it about all of the side effects of antipsychotic drugs and everything about antipsychotics.